I'm Jim Collison, and this is a, a live home tech tip. I'm here with Mike Howard from jpegdaraw.com. Mike recently picked up a, a MediaSonic HFR2 SU3S2 ProRAID 4 bay in, draw hard drive enclosure. And uh, Mike, being a photographer, hard drive space is really important to him. So, Mike, welcome to Home Tech Tip. Thanks, Jim. Yep, I love these devices. This is my fourth one. Well, we talked a little bit about this on Home Gadget Geeks uh, the other night. You said you'd purchased it, and that kind of got me thinking. Wow, if you've got four of them, kind of what you know? What's wh why do you keep going back to it? So first, let's talk about what it is, and then we'll talk about how much it costs you uh, as well in the purchase. All right, what it is is it's a hard drive enclosure. It'll hold four hard drives. Uh, the size is up to six terabyte each drive, is what the website says. Um, so it'll hold four drives. I now have four four terabyte drives in there for a total of 12 terabytes before, or 16 terabytes, sorry, 12 terabytes after I use RAID 5. It Speaking of that, it is the RAID version. MediaSonic has a version that is not RAID. It's just a hard drive enclosure. This is the RAID version. It has USB 3.0, has eSATA. It'll do RAID 0, 1, 3, 5, and 10. I'm running in the RAID 5 con configuration. And, and of course, you've got a few of these. You know, when we think about some of the other RAID devices, they get pretty expensive, four, five, six hundred dollars $600. This comes in just under $200 as of the recording here, um, as of March 8th, 2015. Is it the price that attracts you to this? I mean, is it, it's a fairly inexpensive uh, hard drive enclosure to get into, right? Yeah, and that's, that's one of the things that attracts me to it is, you know, photographers will spend a lot of money on their gear, on the camera, the lenses, on other things that they do, but they seem to skimp on, on hard drives, on the storage and backup, that kind of stuff. So for them to spend, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars up to maybe eight or nine hundred dollars on an enclosure that has no drives in it is a showstopper for them right away. Many of them will not do that. So for me... I like to to think about six months ahead. Six months from now, how's what's my storage need, uh, needs going to be? And when I get to the point where I need more storage, these things are so cheap at a, a, a slightly under two hundred dollars, like you said. I just pick up another one and slap more drives in it, and then uh, move stuff over to it and do something with the the previous ones. You know, include them in my my storage needs then. In many of those, you could also then swap out drives for larger drives, so take them maybe out of the pool, put larger drives in them, re recycle the smaller drives, and then it'll, it'll expand up for you. Correct. Yeah, that's. I could take the one I'm going to replace this one with, it. the one this one's going to replace, I could then put larger drives on that one and bring it back into the, the swing if I wanted to. Yeah, it gives you some more flexibility. This is a four-bay enclosure. You've purchased four drives for it, Yep. and each of those drives is... Four terabytes. Four terabyte. yep. So four, eight, twelve, sixteen, right? Sixteen terabytes. Uh, how much storage do you need? I mean, how much are you using currently uh, in your setup there? So the I'm using right now close to five terabyte of, of storage. What has happened is my previous one was two terabyte drives, so six terabyte total. You lose, uh, you know, you lose that, or actually that'd be eight terabyte. You lose two two terabyte of that. For uh, the RAID 5, now you're down to 6 terabyte, and I was oh, a little over 5 terabytes, so I was less than a terabyte of storage left. So at that point, I decided it's, it's time to get another one. Yeah, time to upgrade. And on this one, you're going to lose 4 terabytes in the RAID, and so you're going to have 12 available to you. That should last you. You'd think that would last you for a while. You're a photographer, lots of pictures, lots of storage needs in that as well, and so it gives you uh, it gives us a pretty good indication of at least your growth will go for a while. When we think about uh, some tips, some some things that you've liked and some things that you haven't liked, let's start with those things that you've liked about it. One of the things I like is you put the drives in there, and I'll pop off the front cover here. You put the drives in there, and you pop off this front cover, and you put the drives in there, and you can see them. I have them labeled one, two, three. They just come with these little, um, these little things here. If I can is that a tray? It is a tray, and I, I'm trying to do this sideways in this. Yeah, that's always fun. Hold on. No problem. Pop them out. Yeah. So as you pull the tray out, it just starts to come out. And once you get them in there, you push them in there, and have all four of them in there, and turn it on. It's good to go right away. With a lot of uh, you know RAID enclosures, it's got to build the array and do all that kind of stuff. You can start copying stuff to it right away as soon as you get it in there. So it's 
different in the sense if you were to build a RAID with a PC, you would end up kind of building that array, waiting for it to be ready. With uh, This is more acts more like a Drobo. Put the drive in, it finds it, it does the stuff in the background, right. and, then, and then you can start copying to it right away. Yeah, and it's good to go. The other thing, I, I, you know, I took this front cover off, this, this front cover. I actually leave that cover off. I don't even put it back on anymore because I have this sitting somewhere where people aren't going to see it. I feel it gets better airflow coming through here. Uh, there's a fan on the back. I feel it gets better airflow with that thing off. I do leave this metal cage on in front of it. That way you, you know your drives are, have a solid connection because it'll, it'll push up against it. And in the front of each one of these is a little rubber pad. You probably can't see them. Uh, but that little black spot next to that, that's a rubber pad, and this will push up against those rubber pads and make sure that the drives have a good solid connection with the connectors in the back of the device. What else What else do you like about it? Uh, you know, I like the the how easy it is to put them in. I like when one of them go bad. I have had one of them go bad. There will be a, an error light up here, and there will be a light down the side and telling you which one it is. So it's, it's a good idea to have another drive handy, ready to go in there if one goes bad. I've And all my four, this will be the four, so the other three, I've only had one drive go bad. And that was when I was using some of the, the green drives. I have switched to using just uh, NAS rated drives. So this actually is using the 4 terabyte Hitachi NAS drives in there. Yeah, um, I was going to say, because sometimes we recommend uh, Western Digital. Sometimes some guys like the Seagate drives. These are the Hitachi drives. Yeah. Uh, are they designed for NAS boxes in particular? I know they're a little faster. They're 5,400 RPM but they get a little better performance than your standard 54 RPM drive. These are actually the Hitachi NAS that are 7200 RPM oh, okay. and they're rated for a NAS. They're they're comparable to the I believe to the Western Digital Reds. Aren't the, uh, the, although the Reds I don't think are 7200. I think the Reds are uh, in, what they call the Intelli Intellispin or whatever it is mm -hmm. where it would do 5900 or something like that. But um, so like that, you know. I'm gonna, Mike. Let me say before you go, I'll include the links for both the enclosure in the drive in the show notes. So if you go to theaverageguy.tv and find this home tech tip, this will be home tech tip number 14. Uh, we'll have the links available for it there. Real quick, what have you not liked about these drives? Okay, what I what I don't like about it is the the power supply is on the side. I wish the power supply was on the back. It has a little you know thing that's angled toward the back. But it is on the side. I wish it was on the back. If you look at the back, you've got the eSATA connection and you got the USB 3 connection. So I wish that they had just put like the power connection back here. Yeah, that's an odd place for it for sure. Yeah, it is. This this little compartment here, I'll take that off. That is you only need to use this thing that I have found. Uh, whenever you first get it, you've got to set it up for what RAID you want. So you choose the RAID on the front. You hold that button down. It's in the instructions. It's really simple. But if you don't do it the first time, you're going to wonder why it won't work. You hold that button down, and, and it will blink and then shut off. And then when you turn it back on, it's good to go. So you do that before you start writing anything to it. Yeah, so pretty simple. Any yeah. other tips that you'd give on that device? Yeah, the other thing I do, like I said, is I, I will put this metal bracket back on it, but I, I do not put this thing back on it, uh, this cover, because it is only going to get air through the bottom here. And then the other thing I do, this thing right here is a fan controller. I turn my fan all the way up. If there's an auto that go one, you know, one through three speeds, I just turn it to three right away. I like to have good airflow going through there, and I just turn it to three and just leave it there. And no. then it's just a matter of every once in a while going, because it's in actually another room, every once in a while going back there and checking to see, hey, has a... Uh, <laughs> the drive's going bad, so you got to do that. The other thing that is is not an obvious, and I can't find anything written up on like their website about it, but I have found that I think the drives will go to sleep. So what happens is when you go to first, you haven't used it in a while, and you go to first get something from it, it's a little slow as they wake back up, and then it's back to their their normal speed. I think in some of the Windows behavior, it might be you click on the you know you go to it, you click on the folder, and it's going to take a second. Yeah. Kind of to bring that back to you. A lot of people keep clicking at that point. You don't want to, of course, you don't want to do that. But uh, it just might be spinning itself back up. As far as speed, they say that if you use the maximum theoretical speed, the e SATA I believe is six uh, gigabit per second, and the uh, USB three is uh, five gigabit per second. So you know, I'm not getting quite those speeds, but I'm getting a decent speed. I'm not, I'm not a, you know, speed where speed is the most important thing for me. You know, we talked about what, 
what I put on here, why do I need 12 terabyte? It is one for photos. It also is our podcast files just chew up a ton of space and uh, other things we do in the house. So this, this device will be basically the file server for the house where everybody using uh, this thing to store their files. And you can access just you can access that just through Windows. Yeah, I I have it attached. In my case, I have it attached to a Windows server, and then the uh, everybody has a folder on here, and you know uh, it's shared so that anybody in the house can 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 go and get files off of that. All and right. then actually, that computer runs Crash Plan and backs everything up on from here. There are different models of this. There's one model that has FireWire on the back. It'll cost probably a little bit more. If you really want the firewire, and then be careful that you don't get the one that is not RAID. There's one that looks identical to it. It's not RAID. You don't want that one. You know, now I'm wishing I would not have got that because it's not that much cheaper. It's, it's just as good to get the RAIDed one. This thing is lights, and will, it has a light-free drive, so it will light up as they're um, you know being written to. And since this is a since this is a RAID, it most likely you know a lot of them are going to light it up as it writes to the array. So it will be pretty pretty bright. If you're in a if you have it in a dark room that you care about the light, you might want to put some kind of tape over it or something. Mm -hmm. In my case, I put it off into a closet and don't care. And you said it does alert you if there's a drive bad. It tells you like a Drovo, it would tell you which drive has gone bad. Yeah, it it visually alerts you. You'd have to go look mm -hmm. at it. So there'll be an error up here. I can't remember where it is. I think it's right here. And then it'll have a, a light on one of the drive telling you which one it is that is an error. And so it's just a matter of pulling the drive, replacing it with a like size drive, putting it back in. It's going to rebuild it behind the scenes. Exactly, and that's a good point. Though the like size drive. So with with raids, like a lot of raids, if you put in various size drives, you're going to have an issue where I believe the way it works is whatever one is the smallest drive is what the raids going to be based upon. So I would highly advise getting four of the same size drives. I'd also say get all four at one time. So if you're going with RAID 5 and you only put three of them in and then later you want to put a fourth one in, you're going to end up having trouble. You're not going to be able to add that fourth one to the array. You're going to have to break the array and then start over again. So get all four drives all at once. I actually had to shut this thing down because I'm, <clears throat> I'm copying things to it to you know from the old one to the new one. Yeah. Oh, and, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Um, I've already got all, all but one, the biggest directory copied over already. So you'll just take it back. Start it back up, plug it in. Just re it'll just it'll join the network and boom, you're you're on. So How do you have that attached? So you've got you're doing USB into the server. Yeah. So right now while I'm copying stuff, it's actually USB into the computer I'm talking to you on. Oh, I got gotcha. you. And then once it's done, once I've copied everything over, I'll unplug that one that's on the server, plug this one in to the server, and then got to make sure everything's good to go as far as. It sees it as the right drive, and Crash Plan sees it right and everything, and then it'll just be used, and then I'll be able to take that other one and do something different with it. And so how do you – so once it's plugged into the server, then do you access it on the network through the server? Yeah. I, for me, I have it mapped, you know, a map drive. You do a map, map drive to it yeah. so that, that you can – so the, the, the rest of the network could see it. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's just you know a map folder on there. For the the rest of the people in the house, you know, this is when they download something from from Chrome or wherever they download it from, they have a folder it's going to on this box. And so for the average consumer, right? When we think about this, uh, in most cases, they're gonna some they're you know they're not gonna have a server. They're just gonna they're gonna either plug this into a PC or a Mac, uh, then they're just gonna load files to it, right? I mean, right. it's kind of what you're doing right now. Really, all you need is a computer that's always going to be on, some device. Even if you have a router, like uh, we were talking about earlier, if you have a router that will allow network attached, will allow storage attached to it. This is not a network attached storage because it, it does not have no any Ethernet on the back. Um, but if, if you have any computer that's running 24-7 and you need that way so that other people can, can see it all the time, then you can just attach it through USB 3.0 or eSATA. Yeah, I think and, the, that'd be the easiest way is to get one of those routers that's got the USB attachment to it. It wouldn't be super fast because those routers generally are not running super fast hardware yeah. on them, but it would be storage. Yeah, the, the it depends on what you want to do with it. What I, I like about it, the way my setup is, and you don't have to have a server like I do, but what I like about it is that the computer it's, it's, running, it's attached to is running Crash Plan. So as soon as we put stuff on here, Crash Plan starts sending it out to the Internet. 
You could do Crash Prime locally, though, as well. If that was attached to your local PC and you had Crash Prime running on that, it would you see could. that as a drive and move it up as well. You could, but if you attach it to your router, uh, Crash Prime, I don't think the last time I looked at it, does not allow you to back up network uh, drives. Very good. Well, that's the Media Sonic, and we'll give this crazy, uh, this crazy long HFR2-SU3S2 ProRate 4 Bay uh, enclosure. Mike, thanks for taking a few minutes. Good to catch it up with you, and uh, and good to take a look at it. Thanks for being with us on Home Tech Tips. If you're interested in this tip, we have more like it. Just add it to theaverageguy.tv. Thanks for listening.